Hi guys. Hi everyone. Hi guys. I'm going to give everyone a couple more minutes to join and then we're going to start. Just make sure you have all your supplies ready. Anything that you can find in the house is a perfect supply for this. Yay. Yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a little bit different than what we usually do. Actually, maybe even a lot different than what we usually do. But yeah, I will explain all that in a couple of minutes. Just want to make sure everyone is in. So we'll wait two more minutes to make sure no one is, um, we're not missing anyone. And then we're going to start. And this is what I'm going to be basing my teaching on. But it doesn't mean we're going to be painting exactly that. Guys, I'm going to go through all the supplies in a second. Just want to make sure everyone is in first. All right. Yes, okay, now I can see that everyone is in. Almost everyone, I don't know how many of us are gonna be joining, but this looks good. All right, guys. Yes, so okay, let me explain how this is gonna go. Welcome everyone. My name is Vera. If you haven't met before, I will be your instructor for tonight. And we're going to be creating our own masterpieces in abstract. I'm basing my teaching today on this painting because there are a lot of uh, different ways to create abstract art. And honestly, there, we can probably make another 10 video tutorials on abstract and we'll probably not cover all of them. So today I'm going to be basing my um, teaching on this style. We're not going to be creating exactly that. I'm going to show you how to create a very similar painting. But also, the main goal is for us to explore and explore that style and see what um, we can do in it. And guys, so what I'm going to do, the first little bit, I'm actually going to go through all the supplies that I'm going to be using, the basis of abstract art. Again, there's so many artists out there and everyone does it different, but I will explain how I usually do it. And I'll give you a couple couple of rules because from my personal experience, I know that there are a couple really big mistakes that people make very often um, that if you do this, the first few steps, you're going to ruin your piece. So I'm going to tell you what not to do <laughs> and I'll tell you what to do. And then you can experiment within this parameters of what is structured to do. And I'll give you those little tips and tr tips and tricks and I'll explain how to apply, what to apply, when to apply, and why to apply it. And I'll show you a couple of different textures and techniques that you can do. And only after that, we're gonna go ahead and start painting. So yes, it will be very informative in a way. So if you're eager to start painting, maybe check in in 20 minutes because first I need you to understand how abstract art works and what makes a good painting and what makes a really bad one. So what is the difference between creating abstract free flow and having a good result and 
a really horrible one because I want you to understand that it's very important actually. I, it might sound like it's not a big deal, but it is important. Once you know the rules, you'll understand it's really simple, but you need to know what is why and where and how. So that and uh, we'll explore different supplies and different tools to create abstract art. So you know what is, so you can actually play with it. So you can create, so you know what does what and how it looks in the end. And then it's like, it's like cooking a meal in a way. When you know that these ingredients work together and you put them in a pot, you end up with a delicious stew or delicious meal. It's the same with abstract art. You can't just throw everything in it because you're going to end up with something that doesn't taste good. So it's the same. You need to know which ingredients work with each other to create a delicious meal. So that's what we're going to explore for a little bit. Now, and then we'll, of course, we'll paint and we'll, we'll be painting in a couple layers here. You're free to follow and do exactly what I do, or you can do your own thing. This is what it's designed for, your free to experiment. But also, if you want to stay within that, that's okay too. Um, let's go through our supplies. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. And as you know, I usually use, we usually use student grade acrylic paint primary colors. So you can see them there. That's what we usually use. And those big ones, big jars. Uh, today, for my personal preference for acrylic, is a little bit different. It doesn't mean you can't go with primary colors. Uh, student grade acrylic, you absolutely can. I don't want to discourage you from doing that. You 100% can. And if that's all you have, absolutely go for it. But I also want to show you how I personally do it and what my personal preference is when I create abstract art, not just for teaching, but when I do it for myself or for art shows or for galleries or for sale. So I want to teach you that. And my personal preference currently is this. So this is what I'm going to be using. It's Amsterdam acrylic. Uh, again, it will work with any paint that you have. The brand of paint is not important here. What kind of paint you're using, not important at all. But I do also want you to know what I personally use because you need to know what gives those results. So this is what I use. I have them in every single shade imaginable. <laughs> um, again, you can do this with primaries and mix them. It's not going to give you a different result. I personally find that it's easier because then I have all colors at my fingertips and I don't have to spend time mixing. Uh, and because sometimes in abstract art, I don't know where I'm going and I might end up in a couple different directions. So I like having all the colors at my fingertips available at all times. I find it very, very helpful when making abstract. With other paintings such as portraits or um, landscapes, I mix. I only use primaries and I mix them, but abstract is a different story. So. I personally find helpful to have all colors imaginable and I'll show you, I'll put them probably somewhere here in color order at some point. But yeah, I have all colors imaginable here. And that's what I'm gonna be using. Um, now, we're gonna be using brushes. Any brushes that you have in house will work, but I will show you a couple of my personal favorites. Big brush, house painting brush, I love it. You see those large brush strokes? Big brush, um, fan brush. Again, not a must, none of it is a must, but I love it. And I'll show you why, and I'll show you a couple different other pieces of mine that um, I use specifically fan brush, and you will see how, and you will see what it does. But if you have it, I highly recommend it for abstract. The rest of my brushes are just square brushes, flat squares of all shapes, all, of all sizes. Sorry, they're all flat squares. They're all the same shape but just flat squares of different sizes. But it is good to have a detailed brush. I'm gonna be using detailed brush um, that I usually use for events, just a small brush, because as you can see, there are quite a few details here. So you're gonna need a detailed brush at some point. Yeah, you can use Google Wash. Guys, I'm gonna catch up on all the messages. Unfortunately, I didn't see them coming, but yeah, I will definitely catch up on all the messages here. Sponge tools, palette knives, absolutely anything that you have. I personally always start with the brushes first, with the larger brushes. So I will be starting my painting with the large brushes again. As you can see, the fan brush is fairly large, but this one is just the best. Um, but just regular acrylic brushes are fine too. The usual brush that we use, the large square for every painting, that's a very good brush. And you're gonna need a medium brush as well, and you're gonna need um, 
small brush, small detailed. Can you use watercolors? Absolutely, it's gonna be very different if you use watercolors, but you can. With watercolors, the difference is you, you don't have white, you don't have bright white. So you kinda need to uh, pace yourself on layers. With acrylic, you can make 10 layers, 20 layers, and it's not gonna affect it. With watercolor, three, four is probably the limit for you. So just pace yourself. You don't have ability to make mistakes with watercolor. Um, all right, so now am I gonna be using palette knife? Yes, you can, but also not specifically, it's not crazy necessary. I have one palette knife here, the small one. But yes, you absolutely can use palette knife, definitely. Can you use oil? Sure, 100% you can. Um, what else? What I will be using is, I actually wanna show you my favorite tool here. This is my favorite tool. This is the best. Literally, I swear by this. This, I got them at Art Store. I know they're also used for cake decorating. And I have a full set of them. But if you're just uh, playing with acrylic, or even if you're a professional artist, you don't need all of those tools. This is an overkill. But if you want to explore and you don't mind spending a little bit, they're not crazy expensive, but again, it's not free either. So I would say just get one or two of those, that would be enough, but I have all of them. And you see they all give you different texture and I'll show you guys what they do. I will show you exactly what texture they do. Now, if you don't have this, what you could do, grab a cardboard, maybe, if you have a piece of cardboard, great. If you don't have a piece of cord, a cardboard, business card, grab a business card. This is easily replaced with a business card. Yeah, it may not be, um, as convenient or uh, cleanable because this one is cleanable, right? Business card, you're probably gonna need to, sorry, uh, I need a glass of water. Business card, you're probably gonna need to throw out after a couple of uses. Spatula, yes, for sure. You can use anything that has an edge. That's what matters here, just the edge. I recommend business card. Business card will do great if you wanna imitate this brush, for example, grab business card, scissors, and cut off the edge. Make this edge out of business card. It's completely doable. The only, yeah, the only difference, it's you're only gonna get a couple uses out of it, a couple colors, and then you're gonna need to throw it out and make a new one, which again, is not a problem. Grab a business card, cut up the edge. You will get the same texture. The same with this one, just different cuts. Grab a business card, make a different cuts. Keep, a little, keep them a little bit apart, and you will get the exact same texture. And this I bought um, either at Curry's or Desserts. I don't remember at this point. I had them for years and years. But I know they are sold in Michael's too because, again, cake decorating or any art store will have them. Curry's has them for sure. Yes, any cards will work. Absolutely. Kitchen tools, the best. Anything that you have. Um, even knives, if you have a good knife, or you know those cake knives, the cake cutters and a cake lifter knife, that, all of that will work. Rulers, 100%. So this is my favorite tools. I will definitely be using this one and either this one or this one. So one of them. Now, what else I personally like to use? I have a few things here. Foil. This particular painting that I have here doesn't have any gold foil, but it is a really interesting thing to use. And you can buy it in sheets or you can buy it like this in chunks. I personally prefer the chunky one because it's already, it's just a combination. It's like a bag of small chunks of gold foil. I love it. Totally swear by it. But again, it's, there is a time and place for it. You can't just add it all over the place and start with it. There is a time and place. I'm gonna put this aside for now. What else? I have this one, mirror finish gold foil. Um, I have a couple of those, which again, I wouldn't be using today, but I still wanted to show them to you guys. Uh, you can buy them in Michael's, um, any other art store, Curry's. You see, just the stencils, I usually use them for spray paint. And the only reason why I wouldn't be using them today, because I'm, I'm today indoors, it's still a little bit cold outside and a, a little bit windy and a little rainy today. So I usually only do spray paint outside because it stinks. So as you can see, those I use mostly for spray paint. 
So maybe eventually when it gets a little warmer in summer, we can make a workshop involving spray paint and in just explore the use of stencils. But today, yeah, I just wanna show you because technically you could use them, you just need a sponge and you can sponge your design on top. I highly recommend not using brushes and, and stencils because they get underneath the stencil and then you end up with um, design that looks like blob and nothing and doesn't make sense. It has to be either sponge or spray paint, no, no brushing with those. So can you make stencils? Absolutely. But I also personally find that's a good investment because they don't go bad. They're reusable. You can reuse them many, many times if they're good quality. And they're not that expensive either. So I have, I don't know, maybe 20 stencils. <laughs> I Again, I love them. I buy them every now and then. But because they don't go bad, I find that it's worth it for me personally. Yeah, you can see I have letters here. I have flowers. I have big flowers, small flowers, a very small flowers. I have all kinds of stencils. So let's put those stencils aside. Um, oh, more stuff, more stuff, more stencils. Again, I told you I have lots of them. So more stencils, crackle texture stencil, one of my favorites. I love this one. More, more, more gold and silver and a bronze leaf. Um, chunks. Again, I mentioned I love those things too. So those are actual sheets. I find that sheets are not my favorite, but I know some people love them. I love chunks more, but either works. They're both great. This is a copper. So I'm going to put that aside too. And another thing that I use for more stencils, another thing that I use from time to time is this gemstones so i have those that look just like pieces of metal like a metal buttons and i have this just silver gemstones well some of you may think that this is not good but i love it i think i like multimedia so i love when there is different media on the same canvas this though you can only use one as your painting is done this is like such a finishing piece and you can add one or two depending on where you want to have them um yes okay i see a lot of you guys um giving suggestions now just to answer to have to some of your messages if you have spray paint absolutely use it 100 percent. if you don't mind the smell or if your house allows for that you have a ventilation enough for it or you don't mind just opening a window 100 percent use it you're not going to regret it it dries fast it gives you great effect if you have stencils Perfect. Glitter, I see glitter suggestion. Yes, definitely yes to glitter. Not at the beginning stages. Glitter is a finishing thing too, so don't reach for it just yet. But have it prepared. Bubble wrap, yes. Again, it's not a first thing. First, we're going to need to uh, work with other things. Bubble wrap, again, a finishing touch. But if you have it, you can use it. Absolutely. Um, no bubble wrap, that's okay. We don't need it. You can use anything you want. You don't need all of those 100 elements. Again, we're making a delicious meal. We don't need 100 spices. We need five good ones. So choose your five good spices that go well together and use them. Um, airbrush, you can. Yes, glue, sea sponge, anything that you have, you can use. For those of you who are wondering when we can start painting, sorry, guys, it's one of those where we're going to need to go through a bit of talking first. If um, you just want to paint and you don't want to learn, that's okay. Check in in the next 10, 15 minutes. Um, go do something else. Come back in 10, 15 minutes. And that's probably when we're going to start actually painting. For now, we just need to go through a lot of things and explore to understand how it works and process behind it. So here, this is what I showed you right now. This is some of my favorite. I personally love using. I also do a bit of pouring so we will probably make a workshop on pouring techniques as well because you know that's fun and it's completely different today we're just going to explore that and you know acrylic but yeah here are some pores we might explore that later too but not today probably all right now let me tell you about how we're going to do this and just 
deconstruct this painting so you know what goes into something like that. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of acrylic paint here. There is some texture. Do you see? A piece that is, uh, this was a fabric. This was a very thin fabric. Um, there are quite a few pieces of that here. There is um, some other fabric. This is fabric as well. This is fabric. This is fabric. There are lots of pieces of fabric. Now, today, I'm not going to be showing you live how to do fabric, but I will explain how to do it if, in case you wanted to do it. This pieces, you need to start with that. If you want to have texture in your painting, you take a Mod Podge. That's right. Whoever suggested Mod Podge, you're correct. You're going to need to grab whatever texture thing you're using. I personally prefer use uh, fabric. I just go to fabric store and I look for textured fabric. I look for something that has a unique texture and I buy just a little bit of that. I would say half meter of that. And I would buy half meter of each. And that way over time I accumulated lots of fabric with very interesting textures. The color doesn't really matter because you're gonna put it almost first, unless you wanna do it as meet uh, halfway through piece uh, where you will still see color, but get a texture. So yes. First thing, texture. If you want to have texture, you're going to need to Mod Podge your canvas before you even start. And also you need to do it a couple hours before you intend to start painting because all that needs to dry up fully. So for example, we're not. I'm not going to be using Mod Podge today for that exact reason. If I start Mod Podging now, we're going to need to have a 40 minute break for that Mod Podge to dry. So that's why. If you guys want to start your piece with a Mod Podge, great. And you have a Mod Podge, Grab something textured, grab a fabric, a textured fabric, a couple of threads. If you, in dollar store, you know, you can buy a very thick thread. You can just mod podge a design made out of that thick rope or thread onto your canvas as the beginning, very base of your piece. So you're creating the texture you want to work with. Uh, if you don't want to do thread or fabric, you can just grab a paper towel and you can soak it in mod podge and then crumble it and spread it the way you want it to create those mountain looking cracks um highs and down ups ups and lows ups and downs highs and lows so do that and again let it all fully dry it cannot be somewhat dry it cannot be a little bit dry almost dry it has to dry fully so that's how you set your stage for your painting you put a texture on it you let it dry fabric thread or paper towel those are good things to use for texture. Now, would you put texture over whole painting or a piece? I highly recommend choose the area. I personally don't do the full piece texture ever. I find that piece like that for this size painting is more than enough. Maybe one tenth of, um, you can go to let's say one up to one third or one fourth of your canvas being covered with texture. But I usually add a small chunk. I would say one tenth of the size of the your canvas covered in texture is like a gold spot for me. I personally like it that way. Um, yeah, you can use glue, absolutely. If you don't have Mod Podge, glue will work just fine. So that's one way to do it. You start by texturing your canvas, you let it fully dry, then we move on to painting. Now for painting, you will always start with a large uh, brush stroke, large chunks. You can even do one color or two colors, or three colors, or four colors, or five colors. I probably go, wouldn't go further than this. And it has to be large sections. You cannot start with details. That's the biggest mistake you can make ever with abstract art, is start with detail. If you start with detail, you're gonna end up with a mess. You cannot, absolutely cannot start with detail. You have to start with large chunks. You need to have an idea and a vision. Even if you don't know where you're going for, you have to start with large sections. You cannot add details. Details will confuse you. It will confuse your brain. Details are added on the last 30% of your painting. If you add details anywhere before the last 30% of your painting, you're going to mess it up. I guarantee you. So do not do that. So we're gonna start with covering background. For me personally, I love a full coverage. So I would color my background fully. As you can see from here, you, you don't see much of my original background because of amount of details on top, but it's red, you see purples here, pink here, uh, green here, 
green here, that was my original backdrop. Once you have a backdrop, then you can start introducing other elements, but you have to have backdrop first. And as I mentioned earlier, I usually use very large brush for my backdrop. If you wanna do palette knife for a backdrop, you can, but you're gonna to need to wait until it fully dries. You cannot work on a wet backdrop because your colors are gonna turn into mud if you do. So Mod Podge, wait until it dries. Backdrop, wait until it dries. The Another second biggest mistake that people make with abstract art is piling too many colors too fast with not without letting them dry. You're gonna turn up, you're gonna turn, uh, you're gonna end up with a muddy piece and all colors merged into each other. That's a bad meal right there. When all your ingredients are mushed into mush, and you can't taste them separate, that's a bad meal. So the same with abstract, you wanna taste each ingredient. You don't wanna have a mess. So backdrop, let it dry. Once we have backdrop, you will let it dry. We can start introducing different textures now. It's not gonna be finishing texture. So for example, uh, if you wanna see a strip of bubble wrap in the end, that's not gonna be a bubble wrap you wanna add now. Now you wanna see subtle textures that you're gonna see in the end. So for example, do you see there's some splatter here? That's a subtle texture that was added right after I had my backdrop. Because, do you see, it's not up front on the painting, it's not your main piece, it's not a center piece of this. It's just a supporting element. So there are small supporting elements that you can start introducing after you have backdrop, such as splatter, such as more of a wavy lines, different um, texture brush strokes. So that's where all those fun tools come into play. They can come right um, after we have a backdrop to introduce the texture. Again, you're gonna cover probably half of it by the end of painting. So you have to aim for that and expect that. Don't, and the third mistake that people do with abstract, you get attached to your piece. Do not get attached to your piece. What it looks like halfway through is not what gonna look in the end. Sometimes we get into our zone and we put a breaststroke and we're like, oh, I love this so much, this is finished. Don't get attached to it. Choose, um, on halfway through stage, when we have our backdrop and we're starting adding the elements and the textures, you're gonna see half of it, best case scenario in the end. So choose half that you love and wanna keep, and that's fine, you can keep them as you should. You should know what are your strengths of your piece and where it's going, right, and keep the good parts, but don't attach, don't get attached to it. Don't be like, okay, this is perfect as is, or, oh, this brush strokes is my favorite. Don't get attached to it. Because once you get attached to it and you start working around all the brush strokes or 80% of it and you're like, oh, I love 80% of it. No, mm -mm. let it go, let it go. Go with the process, trust that it's gonna turn out. Like, I would have that too sometimes. Halfway through the painting, I'll be like, oh, this is perfect. I just need to fix one little thing, but I love this element, this element, this element, this element. And then if I don't push myself for another, um, let's say it's second half, I will regret it. Yes, it will look good, but it will look 80% um, of what it could have been just because I got too attached to this halfway through stage. You have to push yourself forward and go forward with this. Oh yeah, I know. Thanks guys. You know, this shirt is actually, it's like, when I put it normally, it's gonna be back like that in 30 minutes, it's gonna stick out again. But thank you so much, I appreciate you telling me this. But also bear with me, it's gonna go back there. <laughs> All right, so don't get attached. That's your lesson number three. Do not get attached to halfway through painting. You're gonna regret it, go all the way with it. No matter how scared you may be to ruin it, that's what keeps you on, a, that's what keeps paintings on a stage of this is pretty good. If you want to go to this is brilliant or this is great or I love it, you have to push through um, and take a chance. If you don't like it, you will repaint it, but take a chance. Uh, all right. If you guys are just joining and you ask him, this is a lecture only a workshop, both, but bear with me, we still have a few things to discuss and then we'll move to painting. Uh, yes, my example painting is framed. This is actually one of my favorite pieces and it is hanging on my kitchen. So, all right. Uh, 
Okay, now we are in the second stage, right? We have texture, we have the backdrop, now we're adding the subtle textures, the textures that you may or may not see, you will partially see in the end. No details yet. You cannot do details. Mm -mm. Details are reserved for last. Now, after we covered it with some sort of textures, we're going to eliminate some of them. So, as I mentioned, we're going to get rid of some of the textures. We're going to make it more plain. That's where large brushstrokes come in again, because we need to break up those textures. We need to create the layering. We need to create um, this interest going on. It needs to be like a poem, a story, right? It cannot be one note thing. So after that, now is your second opportunity. If you want to mod podge something on top, like for example, do you see these dark pieces right here that I had? They were mod podged halfway through because I wanted to add a texture, B color. So I choose dark fabric, I cut it into pieces, and I made a design out of them. Yes, in the end, you only see a few, and there's actually way more of them there underneath the paint. So that's where you add your second layer of texture. So for example, if you're adding like this, very transparent fabric or very transparent, let's say, thread, so you can add it on already halfway through background. Again, you mod podge it, you let it dry. You cannot work on it wet. Or if you, put, if you have a thick layer of paint and you want to add it on a thick layer of paint, you can. It will stick. That's totally fine, too. So now, after we have our texture, background, midway, uh, textures, large brushstrokes that are getting rid of half of those midway textures and planing them up, even in the up the space, now we are ready for detail. So... Step number four would be actually moving to details and creating design and a pattern of some sort. And you can use lots of um, elements. I personally love those branchy looking ones. This is one of the elements I use a lot. Um, another element, there are some dots, there are some circles, there are some squares. Sometimes I would even take the glass and just use the rim and just add the rim over the glass there. So you can use any geometrical um object in your house and just cover them with paint and add them on but also if you want to you can actually tape out the spots tape out geometrical shapes you can tape uh, a couple lines in here and paint a line in the middle you can tape a square and paint inside the square so now you're adding element and you have to uh, balance it out on your painting so for example you can add one big element here one small one here and one tiny one here it all has to have balance. So the last step is really all about balance. And you can play with elements. Again, you can go with shapes. Some people go with flowers. Some people go with geometrical shapes. Some people go with even more like nature shapes, uh, like a leaf or lines or anything else. But this is your time to put all this in place. And now here's where... Um, you can add a color. I personally wouldn't introduce new colors at this point, or maybe even one, but that's it. And then you'll look at it back and you see what is out of balance here. Because at the end of the last uh, point of painting is really all about balance. So you have to look at it and see what is out of balance. What can I do to bring balance back into my painting? And you do that. Sometimes you'll have too many elements. And again, you take a large brush and you cover them up. Don't get attached to them. Sometimes you will have too little elements, in which case you can just add more. Now, another last, I would say, probably big mistake that people do with abstract art is they try to make it even. Even is not your friend here. You don't want this part look like this part and this part look like that part. You don't want even. Like even with splattering, you don't want evenly splattered painting. I know a lot of people like that technique, and it's a great technique. I've seen it done really well, and I've seen it done really horribly. And what in my, again, this is my personal opinion. You might have your own and that's okay. We're all art, okay. as you know, there are a lot of um, ways to get to certain places. So this is just my way. I've seen, and in my opinion, when you have everything splattered or painted even, it ruins it. It makes it more like a store-bought piece, print for mass production versus a unique or regional piece of art. That's just my two cents. So what I would suggest on the finishing stages is try to make it as uneven as you can, maintaining the balance. 
So it's about finding that sweet spot of knowing where it's too light or too dark, where it's too heavy or too light. And always, always walk away from your piece. You cannot finish piece in one sitting. Well, I mean, you can, but you have to walk away from it. Even for half an hour, even for 10 minutes, you have to walk away. Sometimes I do that, and I know a lot of my art friends do this, so if any of you guys are watching this, you will recognize yourself there. What we do is we walk out from peace and then we sit in front of it like two meters away and we stare at it for 10 minutes. <laughs> That's a very common thing that I do. And I know, again, a lot of my artist friends do that because you need to evaluate it on a distance. When you're this close to it, you cannot realistically see it. What all you see is the little elements. You don't see the whole picture as a whole. What you need to do is you need to put it far and I need to walk out there for like there, 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 <laughs> like another three meters or two meters. And I need to look at it from the distance because that's the only way for me to know what exactly is out of balance there, what exactly is wrong. When you're this close, all you can see is which brush stroke is wrong. You don't see the whole picture altogether. So this is the most important thing. So that's guys pretty much all that you need to know about it. There is nothing else. Let it dry in between the layers. Don't create a muddy painting. Don't start with details ever, 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 no matter how much you want. Don't get attached to details. Don't get attached to breaststrokes. Don't get attached to it. And walk away from it. If you need a break, sometimes I would work on a piece for three, four hours. Then I'll walk away and I'll sleep on it. And I'll come back the next day. And sometimes I do that over a period of time, over, over a week. I will come back every day and I will work on it for an hour or two hours or three hours. I rarely finish something in one sitting. And if I do, I will definitely be sitting and staring at it for like 15 minutes across the room, for sure, just staring. Because you need, you need that time. You need that time to evaluate. Um, Yes, yeah, so you can alternate working on a different projects. 100% that works really well as well. Um, I actually had an art teacher in school, in college. He had his way of teaching, and I'll tell you about it, because at the time we thought that was really cruel, but really I'm very thankful for that. Um, if we got too attached to a piece and he would come back, he would come to us and give us suggestions, or let's say we'll be working on a portrait or on... Um, Oh, let's say portrait, because it was mostly portraits. And we would get it too attached to it, and he was like, oh, your nose is wrong, or your eye is wrong, or everything is wrong. And he'll tell us what's wrong, but we'll be like, but I really like this piece right here, or I really like this breaststroke. What he did, he would take white paint or black paint, and he would cover the section fully without asking us. And there was a lot of tears, <laughs> because we didn't understand why he ruined the best part of the painting. But later, I can look back at it and thank him, because he broke that attachment piece of being like, okay, okay, but I really love that section and I just want to work around it. You can't do that. You have to look at a painting as a whole and see if it's harmonious, if it works with each other. Yeah, I would have been so mad. We were mad at the time a lot, but then we were very thankful because those pieces wouldn't get better if he didn't do that. We wouldn't get better if he didn't like break this attachment off from us. When you think, oh, okay, this is like its full potential. This is good. I need to work around it. I shouldn't touch it. No, th this is like settling for this when you can go right here. So that's very important. Don't get attached. Don't settle for this when you can go right here. You might ruin it. Yes, that's fine. It's absolute possibility that you'll ruin it. And that's okay. You will let it dry and you will do it again. And it will turn out better every next time. So, okay. So now that you know... All that I want you to know. <laughs> and I hope you guys found it helpful and I hope you will apply that to your uh, creation of abstract art because this is very important. But now we can start painting. So grab your canvases or whatever you would like to paint on and grab your paint and let's start with the background. Actually, give me a second. I'm gonna try to find canvas. I have them somewhere. So I'm going to start with the background and with the large brush strokes, I choose 
somewhat a color scheme. You don't have to settle on a full-on color scheme right now. Choose a couple colors. I would say choose two to five colors to start, to start with. I wouldn't recommend going past five colors at all. Um, that's too much for the backdrop, but also any, any amount up to five is good. Two colors is good too. Doesn't have to be five. And we're gonna grab a large brush, or if you wanna use, let's say spray paint, or if you wanna use palette knife, absolutely anything works. It doesn't have to be a brush. But where is my palette? Hmm. I brought a different palette that I usually use for abstract, but I can't find it. So I'm gonna use my regular palette then. My abstract palette is usually just a big sheet. I find that I like having way more space than just this. I find this a little, a too little bit of space. So I usually use like a bigger sheet where I mix my paint on, but I don't know where I put it. So this is what it's gonna be. And I'm gonna be trying to still go off that painting to show you guys how to make that, but feel free to go on a completely different color scheme. You don't have to stick with that. But for that, it's probably, I'm gonna go with this one. This is, who knows what that is. It's a paint, number 316. This is another color I'm gonna put on my backdrop. Yeah, we are gonna make a background. I'm just deciding on my palette here first. Um, I'm gonna go with dark blue. This is a very dark blue here. And I'm gonna go with something lighter, pinky purple. Maybe this, maybe mix. Maybe I'll mix something. Uh, let's go with dark purple too. Let's. Okay, I'm happy with this five colors right now. I don't want to be any anymore, and I know it's going to be a lot of. It's it's going to look really different right now than what it looks there because all those teals and greens I added on a second layer. They were not my backdrop. But again, you go with your own color scheme. You don't have to repeat after me the colors. We are making our own pieces, right? So any color scheme that works for you, go for it. Let me see if I can answer any questions quickly. Yes, the video will be available for later. If you wanna do it later, that's totally fine. You can mod podge on top of background paint, absolutely. I do have a new studio, I do. We moved uh, from one house to another, so this is my recording studio. I have another studio uh, downstairs for creating painting, but this is my studio for Zooms, for YouTube Lives, and for recordings. All right, good. So now I'm just gonna grab a big brush. I'm gonna go with, where's my brush? Here's my brush. I'm gonna go with my very big brush. And with a very large brush stroke, I'm gonna color my background. Now guys, uh, how you color it doesn't matter. I personally, again, like solid coverage, but don't use too much paint here. You don't need the clear because we need to wait until it dries. We can work on wet background. You have to wait dry until it dries, so that's why don't use thick layers. You can use thick layers on finished pieces. Right now, it's unnecessary. So let's do that. Let's go with some of this here. Now, whether they're blended or not, does not matter at all. If you want more of a, a transition, and your painting, it really depends on which style you're going for and a personal preference. 
You can have them abruptly end. You can have them transition into each other better. Totally up to you. So let's go with pink. Take some pink bags. Hot pink over here. Mm. Let's go with purple now. I'm going to go with dark purple next. All right. And I'm going to go with dark, dark blue. And again, I already love it. I think this already looks good, but just because I love this color scheme, I think it looks interesting, but again, no get right? We're not getting in touch to it. Yeah, I started light and went dark only because uh, my water is going to be dirty when I start when I move to dark, but it doesn't matter at all. You can start dark and go to light. Doesn't matter. Doesn't make any difference. Um, how can you keep your colors more vibrant? You cannot, unfortunately. It really is up to your pigment. If your pigment is not capable of going more vibrant, no matter how you mix it, you're not going to get a vibrant color. So I would really suggest just getting different paint if you find that your paint is a little too dull because that's something you can't fix. Like, for example, actually, there's one thing that potentially can fix it for you is varnishing your piece. If you varnish your piece after it's dry, it will bring a little bit of brightness. Varnish always, especially gloss, gloss varnish. Gloss varnish makes your piece more contrast every single time. That's just how it goes. But it's not going to bring it from here to there. It's going to bring it from here to here. So it's going to make it a little more vibrant. And right there, I think I'm still going to go with my dark, dark here. Let's have a dark backdrop. Why not? Again, it's all about experimenting. It's like we're trying to learn how to cook a new meal using the spices and it smells delicious and we go by smell and the look and the taste. So it's the same. We're going to add ingredients and we're going to taste it. And if we like it, we're going to continue. If we don't like it, we're going to redo it. You can think of yourself as an inventor doing this. It's like you're discovering new territories and inventing new things. You don't know whether they're going to work or not. But I think they will work. Okay, let's go for that piece. Yeah, I still want to go dark. Okay, let's go dark. Okay, so I have my backdrop. I have to wait until it dries now. So I'm gonna wait until it dries. It's not gonna be long because I have very thin layer of paint. So it's literally probably gonna be about five minutes, maybe seven minutes, 10 minutes tops. And I'm gonna go to the washroom and I'm gonna wash this brush because it's not 
very small brush. So if I wash this in my water, my water is instantly going to be black. So I'm going to go to washroom and I'm going to wash that and I'll return as soon as it's clean. Alrighty, my brush is clean. Yes, you can use hair dryer, absolutely. I'm not gonna be using hair dryer just because I don't think I can make it to plug with a hair dryer cord. Um, but yeah, it, it you can absolutely use hair dryer. Go for it if you need to. In the meantime, I'm just gonna check all this comments in chat while we wait for it to dry. It wouldn't be long, honestly, about five minutes, more or less. And again, guys, if you want to just hang out with me today and maybe like clean the house or cook as you watch this and paint later, that's okay too. Yeah, I'm going to quickly check all this comments here and see what I can respond to. If watching paint dry is your thing, go for it. Sometimes it's a necessary part of the process. If you're not done, that's okay, take your time. And the video is gonna be here, it's not going anywhere. So you guys can just rewind it, rewatch it, or uh, watch it other day, that's okay to you. That's funny. Miriam, that's a great idea actually. Having blow dryers specifically dedicated to painting, that's genius. Yes, you can use a hair dryer on cool speed, absolutely. That's true. As far as brushes and uh, price for brushes, a lot of my brushes were very cheap and I love them. And I do have some very expensive brushes that died on me very, very soon. So I agree with that 100%. Price is not always an indicator of quality when it comes to brushes. Did I prime my canvas with anything? No, but as I mentioned earlier, you guys can definitely use um, gesso and, sorry, not gesso, Mod Podge some texture on it if you need to. No, it doesn't matter whether your colors mix well together or not.
Do I paint the sides? No, for this I don't, just because I don't know where I'm going with it. So we might end up with completely different color scheme in the end. I usually just paint sides black in the end. No, three colors doesn't have to be just the main colors. Any colors, doesn't matter at all. Yes, if let's say you only have two colors or three colors, you're gonna do you're gonna try to stay contrast for sure. Okay, so are we ready to move? Mine is almost dry. The only things that are not dry is my blues. These two are dry. Blue is somewhat dry, but I think I can start um, adding my second layer of texture. Again, if you guys still have super wet canvas, don't do this. You're gonna regret it, don't do it. Um, let it dry, grab a hair dryer. That's just what it is. There needs to be a drying time, you have to watch paint dry, we will do it. Okay, I am not using my palette personally. Uh, sorry, I'm not washing my palette personally. I never wash it. I usually use um, like a paper palette that you just throw out after, or you can reuse them many times. But for a, for abstract, I don't wash my palette. All right, so now I'm gonna start by adding a little bit of splatter, just because why not? I think that would be a nice addition to that. And I'm gonna use my fan brush. If you don't have brush, fan brush, no big deal. Just large brush works perfectly fine. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water. And again, this is my mid section uh, texture. So it's not what I aim or hope to see in the end. And now you can use different colors, you're allowed. So I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna start adding teals and blues. So I'm gonna grab some teals and blues. Uh, let's grab teal here. And I'm gonna go with this one. This is, wasn't used on that painting, but why not, right? It's um, shimmery blue, so why not? And I'm gonna really, really water down my paint. So I'm gonna start with teal, really water it down. And then I will just put my paint in flat. You see like a night sky. And as I mentioned earlier, do not even it. So if you did it here, do not go all over your canvas with this. Choose it, spot for it, keep it. No matter how much your brain would want to say, but what about the rest? What about it? Leave it. Don't try to make it even. Have the spot, that's it. No more. And your mind will play tricks on you. You will, it's like you will notice, it will wanna make it even. Resist the urge. Then I'm gonna use a bit more the same paint. I might as well, because I'm already using this brush. And I'm gonna add a couple swirls. Again, they weren't on that painting, but we're not creating that particular painting. We're creating something. So, might as well. Do you see, you can see the texture because I am only lightly brushing it on. I have a really wet brush with really wet paint that I'm very lightly touching in a certain spot. Creates this texture, mid, mid painting texture. And I'm gonna add way more of that in different spots. I'm actually gonna add quite a bit right here of this color. Hmm, 
inside a little bit right here. That's good. Now I'm gonna wash off my brush and I'm gonna grab that shimmery blue. I haven't added it anywhere yet. And um, again, we're not trying to add very small pieces here. So we're just trying to add texture, but not a detail. Keep that in mind. If you're gonna try, your brain will try to trick you again into details. So resist that. Add a little bit here. That's good. All right, now I want to grab a little bit of green. That painting has quite a bit of this color, so I will use a little bit of that too. Just because we're trying to make like a friend for that one. And let's add some texture this time. I think it's time for us to add something, something texture. So sometimes I would literally use the paint right away on this thing from the palette for this one. But sometimes I would lay the paint on first with either uh, the straight one, straight edge, or even a brush. And only after that we'll go with um, this texture tool. I find that it's safer that way. However, either is fine if you just want to pick up paint right with that thing, go for it. So I'm going to pick up paint with this thing. I'll add you see completely different look to it. And I'm gonna go all the way down with this. Okay, now before I dry this right away, I'm gonna grab my texture thing. Let's add something to it. You see, the goal is to start seeing those other details through. So I did that. Now I'm gonna wash it off. This is very not wash. Um, wipe it off right away. It's very important that you wipe it off. And I will wipe this one off to you. Now I'm gonna add some yellows. But you kind of don't want to ruin the texture anymore because it's still wet, right? So be careful around it. I kind of want a lighter yellow. I'm not loving this color. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to add some white to it. Not a palette. Oh yeah, now I'm loving it way more. And here, let's add a little bit more texture. Why not, right? So I think I'm gonna continue with the same.
All right. And wipe it off. Um, to answer your question, am I purposely painting vertically? Yes. Um, A, actually, I am personally, I know myself, I am more vertically oriented person. This is, it comes more naturally to me. But also, I am trying to imitate techniques in that piece, and that piece is very vertically painted piece. So that's why I'm painting vertically. You can do this on an angle, you can do it horizontally, you can do it in a circular motion, does not matter at all. Yeah, so do you see I have a good textured backdrop? Um, now I'm gonna add a couple more texture elements and then I'm gonna let it dry because you don't wanna overdo this either. So let's add a bit more splatter for sure. And I'm gonna do it in different color this time. I'm, I don't wanna add more teal. I wanna add a bit more of this light yellow splatter. Okay, so I did it right here. And I might add a couple of some different elements. I might as well add, sometimes I add like a little lines. So like this. And I wouldn't count that as detail because I'm sort of making pattern out of them. I'm not looking at them as an individual thing. I might even do this. This is why I love this brush. Fan brush, one of my favorites. Okay, let me see all the questions, guys, and see what I can answer for you here. How much water do I use down to splatter? Lots. I water down my paint a lot. Guys, I don't know what those tools are called. So you can ask me all you want what they're called, but I don't know. They're just texture making tools. I don't even know if they have a name. 
If you go to our store and explain them what it is, they'll they'll show you where to find them. Yes, cake decorating tools. That's right. Um, my splatter is not big enough for it to run down, so that's why I'm putting it up. But if you find that uh, your splatter is really big and you want it to keep it from running down, sure, you can keep it down, no problem. I wasn't planning to do lotus flower at some point, but we could add a lotus flower. It doesn't matter. We'll have to add one element of something. So could be a lotus flower. Why not? I don't see why not. All right. So now we have to wait until this somewhat dries. Or we can continue adding because this is not actually a huge amount yet. Uh, we could add a few more elements. Um, now, if you wanted to add glitter, now is a good time. Go for it. If you wanted to add some gold, because we're ha more than halfway through, past halfway point, you could add either a stencil or a bubble wrap is good now, or um, like gold or any other color. So let's see. Remind a bit of that. So I wet my brush just a touch, so it picks up gold now. And I might cover it, so this might be a waste in the end, because again, we're only halfway through, but I'm willing to give it a shot and just add it even though you might not see it as much once we're done. And I'm just adding it on a fresh paint. I'll show you guys closer in a second. Again, don't try to do it even. If you're adding in one spot, does not mean you have to add it anywhere else. If you want to add it in another one spot, that's totally fine. But don't go all over your canvas with this. Resist the urge. Oops, oops, oops. All right. So that's where I added mine. And again, you probably noticed it's vertical because everything that I do here has somewhat of vertical underline to it. And I'm likely gonna add more gold as we move further, but for now, this is enough for me. And guys, again, we have to do the job of waiting the paint dry. <laughs> that's just how it goes because again, remember we can't really um, work on wet because we want our colors to stay vibrant and if we work on wet they are not going to be vibrant so we have to wait until it dries so when we apply gold leaf you can only apply it on wet paint so this was a wet spot so I applied it on wet if your paint is already dry you can still apply it you're just going to need to put some glue on first or mod podge or anything that you have that you can stick it onto.
What do you do with bubble wrap? So if you have bubble wrap, you know how it can give you, it's very similar to my um, stencils that I have. So it can give you that texture of like, I don't know, let me see. So do you see how I have this texture sheet? So your bubble wrap will give you similar, just different elements in there. So you just put paint on it and then you stick it on. So it gives you the circles on like one spot somewhere and then you let it go. It actually is really nice. Um, I don't think I have a bubble. Oh, I do have bubble wrap, okay. How convenient, I actually have a bubble wrap that I forgot about. Because again, as I mentioned, I recently moved, so we're still unpacking boxes and boxes of things. This bubble wrap, however, is not very big. I personally find that the bigger bubble wrap does a better job because um, the bubbles are bigger. But yeah, let me show you generally the idea behind bubble wrap. You see a little bit of texture there now. You might even add another element of that somewhere else. Just so that element has a friend. I kind of want a little more up here. Done. Now this is idea with bubble wrap, right? This is subtle texture that we're adding here. So with applying gold, you just have to be very careful with it and uh, gently, very gently press it. And once it's on there, don't rub on it because that's what ruins it. Yes, if you can use any kitchen tools, probably anything, anything that will give you texture, you can use absolutely. Thanks, guys. Yes, please do. So, guys, after this, if you created your masterpiece, please post it in comments on Facebook. We're still about halfway through here. Well, maybe a bit more than halfway through. or maybe two-thirds through at this point. Um... But once you're done, I'm actually going to send you a link right now. If maybe some of you don't know about our Facebook page and you came across just on the YouTube, uh, we have an event created for this painting on Facebook. Um, so just we will make a thank you post where in the comments you can post all the your paintings created today. We would love to see them. All right, so here is the link to Facebook page in case you wanted to share your results later with us. We would love to see them. My painting's still a little wet, so I need probably another 10 minutes, I would say. So, and again, guys, I know it's not the most exciting thing to just wait, but that's what it takes. That's, here is a layered abstract art for you. It just, it takes time and you have to wait because if you don't, you're not gonna get the vibrancy of color. It's gonna end up muddy color and we don't want that. We need to keep our colors separate. We need to keep them um, bright and vibrant and drying is unfortunately necessary for this. 
So we'll have to wait. And technically, as you wait, you can work on the other elements where it's already dry, so that's okay to you. Yay. Aw, oh, thanks, Wendy. Gold leaf sheets. Okay, let me see sheets. I have sheets. I'll show you how I would apply a sheet. Um, let me see. This is not a sheet. This one, I think, is... Yeah, this one is... This is actually my favorite, guys. This one, and I'll explain why. Um, so this is... It says actual leaf. This is the copper mixed color. Do you see? It has different... It has golds and coppers and some red browns in it and even some blues. So this one is my absolute favorite just because of how, how many different shades this one bag has. Okay, let me see. Let me guys show you a texture too, just in case. Yes, I know we should probably... Um, I, you, ideally, you would use... Um, what's the name of it? Ideally, you would use a spray paint, but, well, we might as well, right? I'm just going to use this to dab my flower. And again, it's not ideal, but since we're exploring, we might as well. And I usually, when I stencil, I don't like having the full shape. I like the idea of having it partially showing. Now I'm going to need a big one here. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this is definitely not the most ideal way to do it. The, with a brush and the reason why is when you do it with a brush it gets a little bit underneath the stencil so the lines don't come out clean there they could be much cleaner if we did this with a spray paint you would have a nice clean lines in a brush your lines would be me me but still it's there and again we're exploring right we're trying to see what we can do here and this is one of the things you can do All right, gold leaf. I remember, I remember. I'm getting distracted by all, by all those fun things. Okay, I found a gold leaf. This one is actual leaf. Never mind, it's copper. But I guess copper, copper will work too. Aw, thanks, Bren. So, here's a copper. I may still have a bit of, yeah, I still have um, a spot of wet paint right here. So I'm going to apply it right there. You're going to need to apply it on wet. And again, again, unless you want to put it on glue, which is fine. So I took the piece. Now you're going to need dry brush. In my case, this dry, dry brush is dry and it needs to be a big brush, big, soft, dry brush. And you very lightly. And as you can see, it's pretty straight shape. If that bothers you and you feel like, oh, oh, no, 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 that shouldn't be that way. You can always mess it up. Just press harder on it. It's going to get messier. You see, it was perfect, but I intentionally made it mess because abstract piece should bother your brain a little. <laughs> I actually might add a bit more of it. I like it. And I'm not a big fan of straight shapes with uh, those pieces, with those um, 
foil pieces. So I need a piece of paper towel. And just a little uh, window into my world, I never do abstract pieces on an easel. It's usually on a floor, flat, and I have all my supplies around me on a floor. <laughs> That's how I usually make them. Because I kind of want to see all at once everything that I have to be able to decide which is the best way for me to go forward with it. All right, let's add another piece, why not? Since we already started. Oops, oops. So I'm gonna rip another piece. And with this, let's go to the very bottom. Let's continue with a trend. Aluminum foil, you can try. I personally probably wouldn't. And the only reason why I say that I wouldn't use aluminum foil because it's made usually very durable. So it's much thicker because of why it's made for the purposes that it's made for. This is very thin. It's like you breathe on it and it does this. Like it's a very thin foil, but you can try. There's no harm in trying. Okay, and I know it looks like overkill, all those elements, but we're halfway through, right? Remember what next step is? The next step is that we're gonna cover up everything that's too much to make space for actual final elements. This is all a backdrop. Again, don't get too attached. Some of these elements we're gonna keep from here, but most of them we're gonna cover up. So yeah, this is good. I'm happy with this gold actually. It was a good idea, guys, good idea. Might even add like a little piece right here in the end again to balance it out, right? So I have lots here and just like a little spot there for balance, but that's a later problem. Woohoo! I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. So again, sorry about the wait, but we have to wait until it dries <laughs> for us to move to our final two steps. We have two steps left overall. I mean, you could be done now or you could be done in another 25 steps, but I would suggest two steps more. Yeah, I love partial stencils, so. Yes, sponge would be much better for stencils, 100%. Do I ever seal it always? With abstract art, I seal it always. And you can seal it. There are lots of varnishes available in art stores, lots of them. They're medium gloss, high gloss, um, matte. They're a large variety. And for different pieces, I seal them with different uh, media, gloss level. For abstract, generally, I let go medium gloss. Uh, for animals, I let go flat. And the reason why is, Sometimes it reflects, or for black pieces, I usually go flat. And the reason why, if you cover black piece with medium gloss or high gloss, and there are a lot of fine details, the, how because of how much it reflects light, you're gonna lose all details. No one's gonna be able to see all the work that you put in it. But when it's matte, it absorbs all the light. It doesn't reflect anything, so you can see all the details. So that's, what I, that, that's why I usually do matte for darker, um, portraiture when it comes to animal portraiture because 
then there are a lot of first strokes, right? You want to see all the details. For abstract, I usually go medium gloss. And the reason why is medium gloss or gloss or extra gloss makes it more vibrant. It actually makes your colors pop more. And I don't mind it reflect light a little bit. Sometimes what I would even do, I would play with multiple mediums for sealing it. Sometimes let's say I would um, seal the whole piece with medium gloss but then i take a high gloss or extra mm -hmm. high gloss and i make just a couple drips in the middle with extra high gloss so it makes everything here somewhat glossy lightly like an eggshell in a way and this too like it will look like a running water in a way once it dries your high gloss just a few lines it will look like actually wet spots and sometimes i would do that with resin so i would let's say finish painting and i would uh, cover it either um, medium gloss or matte and then I will take resin and I will add a couple drips or a couple splatters of resin and when the resin dries it looks literally like a splatter of water it's really cool look but we can get into that at some point and have a workshop on a resin as well All right, guys, I'm just catching up on comments here while my paint is drying, and we'll move to the next step. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't have any lotus painting coming up, but we do have one on our website of a lotus painting that is painted by me. Lotus uh, flower with the rocks. I know, I know, it's it's hard. It would bother your brain too. But that's why I'm saying don't get attached because we're gonna cover up most of it. That's okay. Sometimes it would happen that you will add more layers and you will hate it and that's okay. You will recover from it, trust me. Just keep working on it. But make sure you dry in between. Dry in between. But did you notice what we're doing? The structure of it is we do large brush strokes, then details. The next step is gonna be large brush strokes again. So we're gonna actually lose a lot of those details, but we have to, it just has to be done. And once we lose some of the details, it's gonna get a bit more plain then we're gonna add details again. But now, then we're gonna know because we're gonna be 70% through, so for, it's gonna be easier for us to locate those last 30% and know where to add those details. Yes, inks are fun. So if you have inks, gold, silver, or any other color, use them. Inks are a lot of fun. If your base layer looks segmented, you can blend them a little bit. Or because of how much we're adding, do you remember my base layer? Even if you scroll this video right now to the beginning, you will see my base layer was dark all the way. But how little of it can you see right now? Maybe 50% is visible and it's gonna be even less than the end. So I wouldn't worry about it too much because we're gonna cover it up mostly. Yes, you can definitely dry with a hair dryer. All right, so um, 
I think I'm gonna go to next. My paint is pretty dry. The only piece that's wet is right here, so I'm just gonna avoid that for now. And now again, we have a lot of elements, too much going on. We need to free up some empty space for our final element. So I'm gonna grab a big brush. It doesn't have to be as big as the previous one. I'm gonna continue with my fan brush, but any large brush will work. It doesn't have to be a fan brush specifically. And we're gonna add a couple elements that will actually cover up what's going on here. So I'm gonna take some white because why not? And I'm gonna cover up some of those flowers here. I'm gonna cover up some of this swirl here. I'm gonna overlap it out for my uh, gold leaf a little bit. So I'm freeing up a bit of space for my elements later. So it's not too much. Okay, I'm gonna go some here as well. So that's one color. Let's go with one more color. Uh, I don't know, what color should I go with, guys? What color do you think I should go with? as one of those uh, blocking colors in a way too. I need to add something right here. What do you think? I'm pretty open to suggestions. And you see, I covered a little my gold foil, so now it's not as visible. Again, I just merged it more into background. I like how it looks. I think it looks good. And then we'll do final details. Final fine details, yes, soon. Pink, purple, red, pink, purple, turquoise. All good suggestions. Hmm, I don't even know if I wanna introduce red at this point, because I'm kinda quite happy with my color scheme there. I know there is a lot of red in that one, but we could add red, but I think I'm gonna avoid red. I'm gonna go with this pinker purple. That was a good suggestion. Red will be good too. Don't get me wrong, it will be really good. But I'm not feeling it. I think I'm gonna go with pinky purple. Let's go with this. No, let's go with similar. I have a similar color. This one. Yeah? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's try something else. Not bad. Also not bad. Pretty good too. Okay, let's go with both of those. All right, so I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna start with this one, the light pink. Let's add it somewhere here. Let's add a couple of horizontal bar strokes too, right? So what are we, all about vertical? Well, which we are, but might as well. And let's go to that pinky pink. Let's add a little bit of that. I like it guys, I really do. All right, so do you see? I freed up some space. Now I have a lot of nothingness. So I can start adding smaller elements. 
So now I'm going to do that. I'm going to wash up my brush. And I'm going to move to small or medium brush. I'm going to grab this one. I actually just bought these brushes. I've got a set of brushes like that, the pointy watercolor brushes from Amazon. So let's see what, what it's like. I haven't tried this one yet. And I'm going to add, so I'm going to go with similar element to that painting in which, in the way of, do you see there are um, those lines that look like something floor or something floral something natural nature right like leaves plants branches so I'm gonna add a little bit of that and I'm gonna stick with those circular elements as well but again it doesn't have to you can have just geometric you can actually paint one realistic flower somewhere right here and that would be your fine element for final fine element and that will work just fine as well you can paint a tree you can put one ballerina there or a dancer or a person. Um, you can have any element that you want. You want to go more crazy with it. You can add a Simpson. <laughs> I mean, if that's where you want to go with this. One element is just fine to finish it up on top of this. And aim for the area that doesn't have too much. I highly suggest not having it in the middle. Anywhere closer to the edge is better. However, I'm going to add this leafy lines. I don't think I'm going to go with the greens and blues just because I'm feeling like it. So I'm going to go with this one. This is a perfect color for this. It's like it's uh, it's like green. It's nice green. I personally love it. It's like very cold, like emerald looking green. So let's go with that. And where should we add it? Where should we add it? And in which direction should we add it? Should we go straight? Should we go on a side? Should we go like this? I have not decided yet. So let's take a good look at it. Actually, I'm going to put it further because you know. I need to take more general look at it from afar. Let's see. Let's see where I should add it. All right, I figured it out. I'm gonna end it like that. Because I already have a line going right here, right? So I might as well play with that and work off it. All right, now I want to add a little bit of this color somewhere else because I don't have it anywhere else. So I need to introduce this color at least a little bit somewhere else. And I am thinking to add it a bit more here.
Again, sorry guys, I need to put it further. It's, as I mentioned earlier, it's like, it's hard to see objectively what's going on when you're so close to it. I think I want to add another element to the bottom, not to the top, actually. I think I want to add another element right here. So now we're playing this game of balancing it out. That's the, that's the time and the place. And again, your brain will want logically to ration it all. Your brain would want you to put another curve on the side that's exactly the same to even it up, resist the urge. We're not looking for evenness. We're looking for a story. Okay, and here I'll add a couple of those as well, but not too many. I'm quite happy with this. I think I want to switch my color. I want to grab my yellow again. Do you see this yellow? But I want to add some white to it. Make that light yellow we used earlier. And I want to add a bit of that as well. I kind of want to add a few of those right here. All right, I'm very happy with this, but I do want to add a little more color. So I want to add a little bit more of pink or purple or something along those lines, because I feel like I don't have enough of that. All right, so I think I'm going to go with something between my pink and purple. So I'll mix them up. I rarely mix colors for abstract, but I don't see why not. I'll add a couple of those right here. Now I'll add a few of the circles that kind of make me think of berries. They look like berries to me. Like this is a branch with berries on it. That's what it makes me think of. I want to add something bigger right here. And, 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 where's my paper towel? Hmm. 
having paper towel problems. From a situation with a lost paper towel. And I don't like this, so. Well, let's get rid of it. Oopsie, oopsie. I like it more like this. I kind of still want dot there, but it wasn't the right color or the right shape. Who knows? So let's try this again with a different color. Let's try it with lighter pink here. Now that's better. This looks right. This just feels right. I'm actually gonna add a few dots, dots. And now I want to add something here because I feel like there needs to be something right there. And again, as you noticed, um, we're just trying to balance it out, right? Until we feel like, okay, this is good. And then we stop. So it's all about searching for this balance at this point. And as you see, I am not, I will make mistakes. Any, everyone will make mistakes and that's okay. If you don't like brush soap that you put on, either wipe it off or cover it later, let it dry and cover it. Don't be afraid, you will make mistakes and that's normal. I wanna kind of add a couple more berries in this color. All right, I'm happy about those berries. Those berries are nice. This color here as well. And I'm gonna add the last thing here, something, maybe a gold leaf too, and that's it. I don't wanna be adding anything else, I'm done. So let's just figure out what kind of color I wanna put for base here, for a gold leaf. Hmm, let's go with a hot pink, why not? If you don't like it, we'll change it. So I'm just gonna go grab some color, put it right here. Yeah, that was a good choice. That was a very good And this time I'm making transparent, so I watered down my paint. So all the texture coming through so I can see other elements through. And I'm just layering it on. And I'm gonna wash off my brush. Actually, grab even better if you can grab a clean brush. And let's add a little bit of gold. Again, because I'm using chunks, it's not going to be even line. It's going to be very messy. Again, just because the chunks that I'm using, if you're using more of a leaf, you might get... Oh, sorry. If you're using more of a sheet, you might get more of a straight line. But I personally 
love the look of chunks. You see? All right, I think this turned out really good. I can there's, the more we add, the more I wanna add something. So I kinda of wanna add a couple more things here. I wanna darken up this line a little bit right here. So I might even grab a darker blue, just a touch. I'll add another color there. So I kind of feel that one color is a bit too simple. I want to make it a little more complex. So we'll add another color here. It's like highlight with this darker blue. Okay guys, I think I'm quite happy with this. I'm gonna leave it. I like it as is. I might look at it tomorrow and wanna add something else, but I also know that too much is not good. And you see, they look like they're friends now, right? These two paintings. They're not the same, even though they're done in the same style, but they're complimentary. They're friends. They're from the same family. So, and last thing that I would recommend you do on your piece when you're ready for it is edges. So there are two options you can, a actually three options. Option number one, you can choose one color that's currently present on your painting and do all the edges with that color. Option number two, black. That's my favorite option. Just take black, paint all the edges with black. Option number three, frame it. That way you don't need to paint it at all. But um, 
I mean, if you're handy and you know how to do them, framing is the best option. They always make art actually look finished. Without a frame, it never is as finished as when you add a frame. And it's if, again, if you're handy and you have a saw and some hardwood store or like a home improvement store nearby, it's very easy to make a frame. You just cut, just buy those trim strips, um, molding strips, whatever they are. You cut them on a 45 degree angle and you nail them straight to the canvas. Super simple. But again, it really depends if you have the right tools and skills to do that. All right, guys, and this is our finished masterpiece. And again, experiment with it. There are so many ways to do it. This is just one of um, styles that you can do. This is personally what I like to do. And this is actually, I have so many abstract in different styles. This is just one of them. We're probably gonna put another workshop if you want to, if you're enjoyed this one and you would like to participate again, we can explore a different style next time. If you're interested in something like that, you can totally do that, no problem at all. I, I love abstract. I just, that's all I wanna do in life. Um, so yeah, I would be happy to show you a couple more different uh, techniques and different styles on how to do it. Because again, uh, there's so many ways, right, that we can do abstract art with. And this is just one of them. There's still so much to explore. Yay. Don't forget, I'm going to post right now um, a link to where you can post your picture. So here is the link. This is Facebook page. You can go there and post your pictures. If you guys, this is your first time painting with us, thanks for joining. Feel free to subscribe to our YouTube. We go live about once or twice a week with free tutorials and we also have zoom events pretty much every day on our uh, that you can find on our website so if you would like you can join that and if you guys had fun and you want to tip me you want to say thank you by tipping me uh you i would never say no to that you're absolutely free to do it you don't have to this workshop is free um tips are not must but if that's what you want to do i would never say no to that i'll put information for tipping in chat here as well all right. Okay, I put a PayPal link for tipping if anyone is interested. And let me quickly catch up on all the comments. And if you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them for you if I can, of course. What is a website? Uh, it's artistpaladurham.com, but I will send you the link as well. Yeah, we have all kinds of mediums. We have oil, acrylic, watercolor, drawing, oil, pastel, all kinds of mediums on our website, if you're interested in learning those. All right, I posted a link to website right now, if anyone wants it. Yay. Thanks, guys. Guys, actually, let me answer that question for you about the gemstones. For example, now that I'm done with this, what I could do, you see I have the berries element, right? If I had a red gemstone, I could add a couple berries in gemstones because they're about the right size for the gemstones, right? So I could make a pattern, all the berries painted, but maybe one or two or even three made out of gemstones. I'm saying just an idea. And you can always add another... Um, um, 
sorry, English language is leaving, leaving me today. Like another element on the texture and the medium, another medium you can add once it dries, you can even add a char chalk, a uh, couple chalk lines or a couple Sharpie lines. That's okay too. Feel free to experiment with that as well. That's right, no mistakes. If anyone asks you what that is, you can say, oh, that's just supposed to be that way. <laughs> A little pro tip. <laughs> yes, and once it dries, guys, don't seal your painting when it's wet. And ideally, let it dry at least 48 hours. It might be dry to touch after a couple hours, dries fast, but if you wanna seal it and you don't want it to go yellow, in a year or six months or a year and a half, let it actually fully dry and cure for at least 48 hours and then seal it. And you can seal it with the varnishes. There are a lot of varnishes available in art stores and um, you, you can find some that are liquid, you can find some that are actually sprays. They're not very expensive if you need just a little bit. If you buy in the bigger jar, they're pretty pricey, but also you don't need that much. They last a while. You just need a little bit. What is a good oil pastel to buy? I'm unfortunately, I'm not sure. I don't use personally oil pastel very often. So I don't know which one is good, which one is not. Hmm. Maybe someone knows. If you guys know what good oil pastel is, comment in comments. That way we'll find out. Good question. Do you ever, do I ever turn my canvas upside down? Yes but I don't usually do that through the process, even though I know a lot of people do. So it's not a mistake if that's what you wanna do. If you wanna, let's say, turn it around halfway through and see if you like it better that way. I usually finish first and then I decide how I'm gonna hang it. <laughs> so I usually actually sign it like this vertically because that way I can hang it three different ways um, and it will still look good. So I usually sign vertically for abstract because I'm never set on how I'm gonna hang it. Look, this looks pretty good, right? And it's upside down from how I made it. Or that way, still really good. Or this way, right? So that would be my suggestion. Or I know some artists that actually sign on a corner diagonally like this. That way they can still tilt the canvas many different ways. Yeah, I can show them side by side. They're very different again. Well, they should be. That's a good thing that they're different. You see the same family. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Um, I am looking forward to seeing your results. And again, if you need to rewatch this video, I don't even know where to start. Send them the link. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, everyone.